February was such an insane month that I literally can't even lift this stack. Taking the thumbnail photo for this was misery. So let's talk about it. Hey y'all, it's Sam. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing my February wrap up, which I'm super excited about, but also February was a lot. So I have already filmed my March TBR and thank God that it is not as intense as this one. February was full of fantasy, full of like high fantasy, um, specifically high fantasy romance, but these books were real chunky guys. I thought that only having eight books on my TBR after reading 17 in January, I was like, I can do this. <sighs> I mean, I did it, but it was, it was a lot. <laughs> okay, so I read 13 books in January. Let me pull up my stats. No, 13 books in February. I read 17 books in January, 13 books in February. I also have to leave for work in 20 minutes, so I really hope that we can get this filmed. All right, so February monthly stats. 13 books, 6,976 pages, average rating of 4.38. This was a really, really good reading month. Um, one reread, then we read six fantasy, one historical, um, three nonfiction, one paranormal, and two thrillers. Okay, 12 of them were physical books, one of them were ebooks. Did not read any audiobooks this month. Um, mostly because none of the books that I was trying to read ha were available from my library for audiobooks. Five of them were adult books, six of them were new adult. I think those could be a little bit interchangeable. And one or two of them somebody might call young adult, but I disagree. I don't think any of them in this case. In, there's a couple books that people call new adult that I dis or young adult that I disagree, but it's fine. Um, and then I had two YA books. So... Yeah, let's talk about them because we only have 20 minutes. So we'll start with the one that I DNF'd. I did DNF a book this um, month. Technically, I kind of DNF'd two. I guess I should talk about that one too. Technically, I did DNF two books, but one of them I do intend to go back to, I think. Um, and the other one I for sure am just like done getting rid of. Wasn't interested. So let's talk about those first. The first book that I DNF'd that I do intend to go back to is Crush. This is the second book in Tracy Wolf's Crave series and it's basically like a Harry Potter slash Twilight mashup. Um, yeah. So I really, really, really loved the first book. Started the second book. Had every intention of reading the whole series this month. And then I was on TikTok and I accidentally came across a spoiler. I didn't like it at all and everybody tells me that I'm, I'm gonna like it so I need to just suck it up and keep going so I'm gonna do it I just wasn't ready this month I wasn't ready so I do intend to go back to this book it just did not happen in February all right the second book that I DNF'd this is a for sure DNF I didn't like it I'm not gonna go back to it I am going to unhaul it is Scythe this is by Neil Shusterman and it is kind of like a dystopian futuristic They've conquered death, so now they have sites to kill people for population control. Um, I just wasn't really interested. I don't know if I'm just, like, not into dystopians as much anymore as I used to be. Like, I was, I was all, all into dystopians during, like, the 2012 phase. Like, I, that's all I read, I swear. But, um, I don't know. I didn't really like this one. I didn't really care about the characters. And I kind of thought the idea was... I mean, the way that the sites choose to kill people is based on statistics of who would have died in the real world. So it's like, X number of people die a year from a car accident, so we're gonna kill X number of people based on their stats, based on who would have died anyway. So like, is this really better? Like, shouldn't we just make it, like... How is that better, other than now we have these ostracized scythe people who can't, like, have friends or anything like I don't see how that's better so didn't like this put it down very quickly I only made it like six or seven chapters in and was like this is just just not for me but a lot of my students absolutely love it so I'm gonna put my copy in my classroom and 
one of them can enjoy it. Alright, so these books are going to be in absolutely no particular order because I don't remember the order I read them in and I'm kind of in a hurry so I don't have time to figure that out. So I think we're actually kind of starting with the end of the month but that's okay. So towards the end of the month I read three different nonfiction books. I actually read all three of them this weekend. Um, none of them were super long and I don't really have a lot to say about them because they're nonfiction but I will show you what they are so you're gonna see a theme. I read My Money My Way by Kamiko Love and then I read Getting Good With Money by Jesse Fearon and Know Yourself Know Your Money by Rachel Cruz. All three of them are financial books. Clearly there's a theme. I'm trying to get my finances in order. Um, if you're interested in this type of book, I think all three of these are really good. They all touch on very similar things but in slightly different ways. This one was by far my favorite. I have been following Kamiko Love on Instagram forever. I use her budget by paycheck method. It's it literally changed our finances. It's great. Um, and I think she's very, very realistic about it. These can be a little bit strict and a little... I mean, if you've read anything by Rachel Cruz, you know like that she's Dave Ramsey's daughter, so there's the baby steps, and they're very, very strict about those baby steps. I think Kamiko Love is a little less strict while still following very similar principles. It's a lot more doable, I feel like, and a lot less restrictive. Like in these, it's like, oh, you're going to hate your life for five years and then you'll be happy. In this one, it's like, you don't have to hate your life. You just need to prioritize your life. So again, I really liked all three. I think this one was really good because of the themes. It's more about knowing yourself and why you spend money the way you do. So I thought that was really helpful. But yeah. Other than that, I mean, I don't really rate, I mean, I, I did, I rated them all five stars because I thought they were helpful, but like, I feel like those ratings are kind of meaningless with nonfiction. So do with that what you will. All right, another book that I read this month was Shadow in the Ember. This is by Jennifer L. Armentrout, and it is the first book in the prequel series to the Blood and Ash series. And this follows um, Serafina. This follows Serafina, and she... I mean, if you know anything about Blood and Ash, Serafina is a maiden, but not quite in the same way that Poppy was. Um, and she was like f born and raised and bred to be the consort to the Primal of Death, but when he shows up, he doesn't want her. And so she grows up believing that like something in her is broken and why doesn't he want her? And then some things are shed to light, she ends up finally meeting him, and things go from there. I gave this book four and a half stars. I think it's a really good prequel to Blood and Ash. Um, what kept me from giving it five stars is that ending. I, I got a little bit frustrated at the ending. I also thought the beginning was very slow. It took a good almost 200 pages before I was really invested in the story. And I found the same thing with Blood and Ash uh, with the first book. So I think that might just be a theme here. But it was kind of really fun. Um, honestly, it was really fun. I really, really, really like... Um, the guy in this book like a lot I almost like him better than Hawk but not mm, mm, mm. that one would be tough I really like them both it is essentially the exact same story just um different characters like I'm not gonna lie it is basically the same thing so yeah you're not really getting anything new here but if you liked Blood and Ash and you didn't want it to end like this is a fun ride. You will probably enjoy it if you can get past the fact that it's the exact same story with different characters, which I did pretty easily. Next book I read was Lock Every Door. This is by Riley Sager and it follows um, mm, Jules and she is really hard off financially. She can't afford to pay rent. She broke up with her boyfriend. She's living on a friend's couch. She desperately needs money and she gets offered this job as an apartment sitter in um the bartholomew it's like a famous secret building in manhattan um and there's like some rules like when she gets there she can't really talk she's not supposed to talk to anybody um and she's just supposed to live there for like 12 grand or something for like 12 weeks i think it's a grand a week or something like that it might even be more and um 
then some of the apartment sitters that are in the building go missing and Jules starts asking questions and she's not supposed to be asking questions and things kind of spiral from there. I think I gave this book three stars. It was interesting but it, it wasn't what I was expecting at all. Um, and I was kind of disappointed at the reveal and I was more disappointed at the formatting of it. Like, because everyone in the book is so secretive and so, like, there's nothing wrong. It felt like nothing was wrong. Like, it felt like Jules was crazy and that there was nothing wrong for the longest time. Like, I didn't really have any questions. Like, one apartment sitter goes missing and you're kind of like, okay, cool, I wonder where she is. But, like, you never really get any other questions until the end and it's like here's the reveal congratulations and I'm like oh okay cool that didn't really answer any of my questions because I didn't really have any questions but okay so yeah I wasn't like thrilled with it but I thought it was kind of intriguing and it was an interesting concept I just didn't so much care for the style of it but I'm gonna read another Riley Sager book in March so we'll see how that goes. I kind of already talked about this one but it's fine. So I also read Crave by Tracy Wolf. This as I said with Crush is basically like a Twilight and Harry Potter mashup kind of thing. Um, the first book is phenomenal. I loved it. I have heard they get better but I'm still a little bit bitter about what I know happens. So we'll see how this one goes but um, basically this one follows Oh gosh, I don't even remember her name. Um, I'm really, really, really bad with names and there's been so many of them. I think it's Grace. Her name is Grace and she just lost her parents and she is going to move to Alaska to live with her uncle and her cousin at the boarding school that her uncle runs. Um, and obviously the boarding school is not for humans. It's, that's pretty clear from the beginning. Um, so yeah. Things go from there. It's really, really fun. Uh, it's YA, but it's like upper level YA, I feel like, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I know I'll like the rest of the series. I just have to get over the thing, and I'm going to do my best. I am. Next book I read was You'll Be the Death of Me. This is by Karen M. McManus, and it is her newest young adult thriller. I read this in one sitting. It was good, but it wasn't great. I think I gave it three and a half stars. It was... It was good. It was not great. I like that's really all I can say about it. It's a very, very typical YA thriller. It follows the same pattern as everything else she's written. We're just not really seeing anything new here. And I wasn't all that interested in the mystery. I was I had questions. I was intrigued, but the final reveal was a little bit disappointing and the whole getting from point A to point B was a little bit boring so I wasn't overly thrilled with this book but I do still really like her writing I still think she's really good at thrillers I think if this had been the first thriller of hers that I'd read I might have liked it a little bit more but having read everything else she's written this really isn't anything new um so yeah and then I read Go Tell the Bees That I'm Gone this was my outlander read for the month and now it's over and I I need closure like I need book 10 as far as I know there's going to be 10 books but it was seven years in between publishing books eight and and this book so um I might be dying for a while this this book was good but it's very much a lot of setup for the last book and it just feels very unfinished now so like I felt like I should have been like I should have let out a breath at the end of it like I've been reading these books for nine months now eight months now and I've read a book a month and then I read two books in one month and I just felt like after all of the time and effort and energy and love that I have put into reading this series I need closure <laughs> and not having it is it hurts so I'm probably just gonna reread book one and make myself feel better for the foreseeable future. All right, the next three books I read were a series. So I read Empire of Storms first. This is book five in the Throne of Glass series by Sarah Dumas, and I read the first four books like a long time ago. Not even that long ago. It was last year. It was, I started them like last April, and I read the first four plus half of Assassin's Blade. I will never finish Assassin's Blade. I I can't. 
I can't do the same thing. But um, I read the first four and then I put the series down because I really didn't like the first two. And then the, the third and fourth one were starting to get a little bit more interesting, but I just wasn't invested yet. And I didn't think I was going to finish the series. This book changed my mind completely, literally changed my life. I, mm, mm, I for sure gave this one five stars. This one literally changed the whole series for me. I don't even know what it is. It changed absolutely everything. And I loved it. So this series follows an assassin and she in the first book she's competing to be the king's assassin with a bunch of other assassins. But honestly like that is only tells you like an eighth of the story. Like not even. Like she has changed so much that the series I'm just, I need to talk about the other books. Okay, so there's Empire of Storms. Then I read Tower of Dawn, which I didn't want to read, didn't think I was going to like, wasn't excited about reading. This is the reason I put the series down because I didn't want to have to read this book. And I freaking loved it. I literally gave it five stars. Like, I absolutely loved it. And uh, it changed everything about the series to me. The thing, like, the whole thing with Kale and I was upset and I wasn't sure about, like, I liked Rowan, but I loved Kale, and I don't, I'm not good at the switching love interest thing. This fixed that for me. Like, he's happy, I'm happy, everybody's happy, life is good. So, I gave this one five stars too, and I still am a little bit shocked at that. And then I read Kingdom of Ash, which is the last book in the series, and basically cried my way through the whole book. It is so much fun. It is such an epic fantasy with the romance and like all of the different romances and I just love them and I loved the like war part of it and the world building and just like the story. I love how far Aelin has come like I can't even believe she's the same person as she was in book one like this is just absolutely I ended up really really loving this series almost as much as I love Akatar. I just <laughs> I did end up really liking it and that was quite a surprise. All right, and then the last book, nope, just kidding. The second to last book that I read in February was House of Earth and Blood. I am going to read House of Sky and Breath in March. So um, this is one of my favorite books of all time. I love this book. It's another Sarah J Moss book. This is from her Crescent City series, which is a more adult fantasy, urban fantasy thriller type of thing. I love this book. This is another one of those books where you basically just cry through the whole thing starting at chapter five and then you never end. <sighs> the whole book hurts but it's so good and the second book makes me very nervous and if you've read anything by Sarah J Maas you know why. So um here's to hoping that doesn't happen but it probably will if we're being honest. So yeah, that'll be fun. But yeah, loved this book. When I first read it, I almost kind of wished it was a standalone. And I still kind of wish it was a standalone because the first book was just so perfect. I'm a little bit nervous for the rest of the series. But we'll see. But obviously, that one was a reread. It's still a five star read. Loved that one. All right, and then the last book that I read in January, I read it last night or in February. Read last night. It was just an ebook on Kindle Unlimited. And that is A Ruin of Roses. I can't remember who it's by, but I didn't like it. I gave it like one star. I really didn't like it. Um, this is a Beauty and the Beast retelling, but with like shifters and smut. Um, I went in hoping for Akatar, and like you get some Akatar vibes, but I felt like, I mean, y'all, I like smut just as much as the next person, clearly. This one was a bit much. I, I really felt like, um, you had me until the orgy thing. That was a little much. I I do have limits. That that was that was a bit much. So I didn't really end up enjoying it. I did finish it because I felt like I had to and I wanted to fit one more book in for the month and it was short. So I did finish it and I can see like there were little glimmers of plot that I was like, I kind of want to know what happens next, but not enough to get past the fact that there was very little plot and very little romance, just smut. Like I definitely prefer there to be like a love story before the smut and there very much was not. So yeah, it just wasn't for me. But if you like that stuff, you might like this book. 
So that was everything that I read in February, which felt like such an intense, really, really intense month, but I'm really, really happy with a lot of the books that I read. I really enjoyed February as a whole. I got so into the fantasy romance thing. It was just like I was mood reading and it fit my TBR and life was just absolutely phenomenal. But a little bit stressful because I didn't think I was going to finish everything, but I did. And then I managed to read four more books in one weekend. So yeah, that is all I have for that. If you want to see what I'm going to read in March, I will link that video below and I will see y'all in the next video. Bye guys. Oh my love You're such a fragile thing I know And with the way